Again, welcome to all. My name is Tamara Kasarevic. I work in the marketing group at Fujitsu America, and I'm excited to be hosting this session today on Smart Factory. In the summer of 2019, Fujitsu, in partnership with Technology Group, PAC, conducted a study of IT and OT decision makers at uh, 100 top large US manufacturers. And the survey results shine a light on the latest challenges and opportunities around the Smart Factory concept and asks where manufacturing firms are in their journey. It's clear from the results that the data um, Smart Factory generates is rich in resource. It's what transformative business models can be based upon, and yet manufacturers are holding back. The question is, why the delay? And today I'm pleased to introduce our speakers, Raymond Russ, Senior Director, Industrial IoT and Smart Factory, as well as Greg Pinkar, Senior Director, Digital Manufacturing, who will be answering this question and discussing the survey results with respect to challenges and opportunities and how Smart Factory can enable manufacturers to be more efficient and profitable. Before I hand over the mic to Ray and Greg, I have a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover about this presentation in Smart Factory. Firstly, today's webinar will be recorded and made available to you after the live session by tomorrow. And next, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentations. If you have a question for our speakers, please feel free to send it through the Ask a Question tab at the bottom of your player. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session. And if we don't get to your question during today's webinar, we will be sure to follow up afterwards. So without further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming Raymond Russ. Ray, over to you. Thanks, Tamara. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for joining us uh, today. Uh, as Tamara mentioned, uh, Ray Russ, I head up our Smart Factory uh, offerings for North America. And I want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, let's start out with what the definition of Smart Factory is. Um, Smart Factory is a concept born out of research around Industry 4.0. Uh, basically, the name given the current trend of automation and data exchange and manufacturing technologies. Um, it includes everything from cyber physical systems, the Internet of Things, industrial IoT, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and more, uh, including additional technology that are out there. The basic principles of the smart factory um, is that by connecting machines and other systems, businesses are creating intelligent networks uh, throughout the manufacturing process that can control each other autonomously, autonomously or at least semi-autonomously and in real time. Um, is a concept real though, or is it just mere hype by you know IT and OT uh, vendors and SIs just like Fujitsu? Um, so as, as T mentioned, uh, we did the survey with uh, some manufacturers uh, earlier last year, and part of that was to find out what other manufacturers are thinking out there, but also to validate it with our experience with our customers uh, in this particular space. Uh, the split between the companies were all about 50-50 discrete to process manufacturing. Um, and the minimum, as T mentioned, they, they had to at least have 500 employees, uh, but also had to have some smart factors in place, um, and either from a planning perspective or so forth, or we're thinking about smart, smart manufacturing. Um, this is the first in a series of webinars. Today, we're going to go through and talk about the findings of what companies have we found out in this survey. Uh, and the second webinar, I'll bring up the date again at the end, uh, will be February 26th, currently scheduled. And we're going to dig into building the business case for Smart Factory Roadmap uh, and how companies are doing that uh, in a much more detailed webinar. Uh, one thing I'll bring up here, the, one of the biggest challenges that, and bringing up that webinar, one of the challenges that we found, one of the number one challenges with manufacturers was actually building the business case. And we're going to talk about that in this webinar. And if you look at the Smart Factory map here, and I'll refer back to this, uh, in this moving forward, but when you think about putting an ERP system, you do order to cash, you have a, a very linear progression of how you're going to put an ERP system. Companies that are looking at Smart Factory in the journey, um, all of these areas on this map could be done in one-offs. Um, and so a lot of companies are struggling. Where do they start? What's the most important initiatives in their business? And how do they define those? Um, and, and that's part of building that business case. So the key findings, let's start out with the key findings. So first of all, uh, interesting here, um, we're, as we have progressed through um, helping companies with Smart Factory, one of the things I heard last year at one of the manufacturing events I attended was that Smart Factory or IoT projects were stalling. 
Uh, what we saw over the last 10 years, Greg and I have been doing this for a long time. What we saw a lot of things happening where companies were, they were driving their smart factory projects through IT. Um, somebody at the enterprise level uh, would have a platform or maybe whether it be an SAP or Oracle platform or even other applications that are out there, and we'll give it to a developer to go develop an application, whether it be around OEE or monitoring at the shop floor level. Um, they do a POC, send it down to someone at the plant, the plant will say, this is not exactly what we need. So we saw a lot of those projects happening and um, a lot of failures. If I, I, what I've heard a lot over the last couple of years were people saying, if we're gonna fail, let's fail fast. Well, what I saw last year, really a lot of um, companies saying was why fail at all? Let's not just do POCs and, and, and send things down to the plant without getting them involved. Let's actually start doing some strategic planning uh, and figure out where we can add the most value to our plants. So I don't see them stalling. What we see less of though are one-off projects. They're a lot less com uh, common. Companies are actually taking a more pragmatic approach and say, where are we gonna get the value of the products that, or the projects that we're gonna, we're gonna do out there? Um, so specific projects and pilots. Um, the term POC pur purgatory, I saw it at an advanced manufacturing summit last year, all over uh, their, um, their marketing material, stop POC purgatory. Um, more and more companies saying, let's start with a production pilot. Let's measure that, quantify that, and see if there's areas that we can roll it out to our, uh, to our other organizations and to our other plants. So, again, so here's one of the first questions we had was how, you know, how important or how high the priority to consider smart factory uh, from a strategic perspective uh, and how vital is smart factory initiatives to your future competitiveness? This is the biggest change we've seen over the last few years is that it's gone away from becoming an IT project to becoming uh, strategic business initiatives, whether it be to reduce costs, improve efficiency, but how, how can we see um, uh, monitor and, and, and see initiatives and how successful they are within our organization? Um, most companies have a clear view uh, on strategic importance uh, so they're doing a more of a top-down approach and also bottoms-up approach on how they're measuring um, strategic projects within their, um, within their smart factory initiatives. Um, again, moving to build strategic roadmaps and again versus the POC purgatory that I'd mentioned earlier. Uh, you can see from this slide here, 55% uh, um, of the companies we surveyed um, said at least uh, seven or higher on the importance of smart factory to us strategically. And 68% of the companies said in the future, competitiveness, uh, they're gonna focus on smart factory initiatives. So what were the focus series that companies are looking at um, when, when it comes to uh, smart factory initiatives over the next three years? Um, proven, and, and these most, for the most part, align with what we've seen from our customers and our smart factory projects uh, over the last few years. Improving product quality absolutely seems to be one of the top initiatives we've seen. Um, and some of these maybe don't kind of call out what we've seen a lot of as well. Um, you'll see here improving asset utilization and, re and, and reducing downtime. Um, EAM, enterprise asset management, uh, OEE, condition monitoring. Uh, the second one you see there supporting digital transformation, um, which I would say a lot of mobility um, companies trying to get shop floor integration probably falls in there. Uh, but this definitely aligns with what we've seen with where the comp with other companies are going. Interesting enough, uh, a couple of years ago, sustainability seemed, seemed to be very, very high on companies' initiatives. Um, you look at the bottom there, reducing EHS, health, safety, and environmental risk, and reducing energy costs. Uh, we saw the last same thing last year. Well, they seem to be important to companies. They're seeing quicker return on investment um, and value from some other initiatives. So they've kind of moved their priorities. Um, to those uh, in that space. Um, some of the bleeding technologies though, um, augmented reality seems to be really having an, up an uptick. We actually, in one of our plants at Fujitsu for network communications have used augmented reality in assembly um, to actually reduce assembly cost uh, by 47% in one of our production lines. It's actually in a production operation. We've seen more and more of that. Mostly we've seen augmented reality being used in plant maintenance. Uh, and more constructions. So there, and plant maintenance, there does seem to be a move in some of the advanced uh, technologies and artificial intelligence as well. We're also seeing a big move in quality, um, companies using um, image recognition as well, uh, 
uh, are, are coming up fast uh, in some of the projects that we're seeing out there with companies. Focus areas external, what companies are looking at. Um, improving customer satisfaction, um, obviously. Um, um, improving supply chain management, working with their vendors and supply chain. Um, but also better monitoring and management of products after they leave the plant. And the new term servitization has been, we've been hearing a lot of that the last year or two. Companies are looking, manufacturers specifically are looking for areas to uh, add additional revenue streams. Um, we see a lot of companies out there we're working with are actually starting to build sensors out of their, into their products, actually. Um, so they're already thinking about how can we put sensors in our equipment so we can get information in the cloud and actually look at new ways to provide uh, better um, customer service, so whether it be a warranty perspective, uh, helping companies monitor their equipment and creating portals. Um, so these seem to be big areas that we see customers looking at. Uh, and our this survey has validated that uh, as well. Sorry. So challenges, um, as I mentioned earlier, and this in the last quarter, I spent quite a bit of time with manufacturing conferences and talking to some of the new leaders around Smart Factory. That building the business case that I mentioned earlier seems the biggest area that companies are struggling. Um, just the amount of data that they need to collect to build that business case, whether it be from the plants, asset inventory, the disparate systems they have in plants, is the biggest challenge um, that we're seeing out there. Um, the other huge area that we see is on the bottom, actually, internal organizational challenges uh, and challenges integrating OT and IT. Just from a culture perspective, you know, shadow IT has become one of the biggest um, um, problems we see at plants. Plant managers are basically all they're concerned about for the most part is how do I get, how do I become efficient and how am I measured at the plant level? Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, some of these projects that came down from enterprise level to the plants never quite fit their needs. So we see more and more companies with the challenges of IT, OT integration. Um, and so this is causing a, 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 cult, a lot of culture issues. Um, what we're finding is that getting the, the plant uh, managers and shift operators and supervisors to work with the with the enterprise level is helping to to solve a lot of those issues. The next thing we asked was, you know, the of the of the data that companies were analyzing. Uh, where is it being analyzed? And what percentage of data is being analyzed in the cloud, in your own data center, um, and at the edge? No surprise here. Um, you know, companies are, are still struggling a little bit um, in, their own in their own data center. They're trying to figure out how to move um, to the cloud from a hybrid IT perspective. Um, but as you can see, in the next five years, they see, um, they see the benefit in moving uh, both to the cloud as well as uh, the edge to analyze their data. And then what percentage of the smart factory data is analyzing business decision making? Um, interesting enough, only 28%. Most data analysis still exists in silos, and it's being, it's being done at the plant level um, or even uh, at the line level. Uh, also, also, much of the data collect is, is even, isn't even relevant by the time it gets to the correct person to make a decision uh, that's not real time. So, and this, all of this is not surprising when we look at the next slide. So integration of smart factory solutions within existing IT applications and or ERP. I heard from an executive last year that ERP was dead. Uh, ERP is not dead. Um, and there are challenges with the companies, whether they've got um, uh, 20, 30 year old ERP systems that have not been standardized to best practices or multiple ERP systems. And there is a challenge there. Uh, but ERP is still your digital core. Uh, and also, the number one MES system is still out there, is still Microsoft Excel, Excel spreadsheets. Um, and this is why companies are struggling. One thing to keep in mind as you're building your business case. Um, and as we help companies realize a roadmap, there's always going to be a phase zero or a wave zero where you, you're looking to find some low-hanging freak to see, see some early benefits 
but there is still work to be done up front, whether it be uh, retrofitting or refitting some of your lines or upgrading your ERP system um, or network communications. There are some things that are going to be done up front that will lead to the projects or initiatives in later waves or phases that are actually going to see the benefit and the value. And that's why it's so important to build out that long-term roadmap and business case so that you can see the value through certain waves and the maturity level you'll see achieve at different levels, in different waves as well. So just to conclude here on some of the data that we found, uh, interesting enough, even though there's still a lot of challenges out there for companies as they figure out uh, the smart factory roadmap um, and, and, and how, to, how to achieve it, um, companies, 72% of companies said they were still going to continue to invest um, in smart factory. It's important to them strategically. Um, and um, they're, still looking for, they're still looking to spend money in this particular space, uh, and they're going to continue to move forward with their initiatives. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, key strategic initiative and critical companies' future competitiveness, and just highlighting this slide again. Um, and the ROI in smart factory projects. So 54% of the, of the responders to our survey have still an ROI. 91% um, achieve ROI in under three years. Um, as the companies that we've worked with uh, to establish, a, establish and validate the business cases, we, we show that ROI is typically achieved in the first uh, year, or two year range. And some of the smaller projects we've seen uh, ROI in less than one year. The journey with Smart Factory. So, um, You know, your smart factor journey should align your strategic priorities for your organization. And you can start with scalable proof of value. Uh, you can consider how to build your smart factory. You can begin with, begin with the following steps. If you look at the bottom, think big. Develop a vision for your organization's smart factory journey uh, based on your long-term strategic priorities. Um, start small. POCs aren't, uh, production pilots aren't necessarily bad, but develop some solutions and demonstrate the value in a smaller set um, of scope. And then you can scale fast. Deploy and scale those solutions that you've validated across the overall scope uh, and monitor closely for benefit realization. So keep in mind, smart factories, holistic solution, uh, and it, to join what happens within the four walls of your factory with the end-to-end -end digital supply chain. Um, so to achieve a sec truly successful outcome and organization embark on this journey, to consider the full array of supply chain uh, initiatives that are out there for you. Um, on that note, I'm going to, again, I want to remind you, uh, February 26, we're going to have another webinar on building the business case, and I'm going to turn it over back to Tamara and see if there's any questions out there for Greg or I. Thanks, Ray. We have uh, received some questions. Let me uh, begin with the first one. Uh, why are companies having problems building business cases? And um, second part, related to that question, uh, those that are successful in building a business case, how are they doing that? What is their approach? Could you, uh, okay, this is Greg. Could you repeat that again, Tamara, please? Sure, no problem, Greg. Uh, why are companies having problems building business cases for a smart factory? And uh, the companies that are successful in building those business cases, how are they doing it? What is their approach? Uh, I think a lot has to do, or, or what we found is that a lot has to do is when they first decide to go down the smart factory route and pick a project, they need to look at that project in greater detail than they're doing. And then when I say that, it's basically is, is that, for example, is there a qualitative benefit or is there a quantitative benefit? An example of that would be, you know, a manufacturing analytics scoreboard, which would, you know, help the plants basically monitor their operations and give them some real-time data, but quantifying the benefit associated with that can be difficult. But if you look at it a little bit differently, what can happen is, is that if there's a lot of effort given to generate data by the use of Excel or other spreadsheets, there could be savings based on the fact that people are doing this task and those people can be repurposed to do other tasks. The other point, too, is, is that why are some more successful? So what they do is they don't just take a look at a project in isolation. They take a look at the project as a series of steps to get to some end state that's desired. 
Now, for example, when you talk about condition-based maintenance or you talk about predictive maintenance and, and putting sensors on the line and how you use those sensors, you know, you're going down a path where basically you're not only going to be taking a look at the sensors, but you're also engaging the employees to be able to use that information to the company's benefit by reducing downtime and increasing capacity. Okay. Great. Thanks so much, Greg. Uh, we do have another question that's come in. Um, you talk about value and data. Where specifically do you see data creating business benefits? Uh, there's there's multiple places there. And Ray pointed out during the presentation, there was a slide that talked about data being analyzed. And if you took a look at the slide, in the future, more data, in fact, twice as much data will be analyzed at the edge. And why is that? Because the edge is real-time data and it's machine data, just like we were talking about the, you know, the examples with predictive maintenance. That edge data basically can be used by the operators and by the supervisors on the floor to detect problems before they become serious problems and have a negative impact on the business. So when you start taking a look at getting data from the edge, more companies are moving towards edge devices, being able to monitor machine performance, being able to operate, um, monitor operator performance, as well as quality attributes. But the data that basically is also taken and stored either at the data center or the cloud, or you use the data in a digital twin, allows you also to analyze data over a period of time to take a look at trends, to take a look at the differences between machine performance and why does one machine perform better than another machine or why does one shift perform better than the other shifts or other variables within your operation. So you have value in data from having the edge devices on the floor and getting real-time data by basically improving your operations and increasing your efficiency, reducing uh, wastage, increasing yield. And then you have the data that's basically going to be analyzed over a period of time you know, through the digital twin or through AI that's going to allow you to see differences over longer term, over a longer term horizon. Okay, great. Thank you, Greg. Uh, one final question that I have for now. How does Smart Factory impact employees? Different track. Well, that, that's different. And it's a, um, it's a mixed bag when it comes to employees. Um, mostly positive, though, in terms of one, the Smart Factory what you're doing is you're increasing the capabilities that you're giving to your operators and your supervisors on the floor. And those capabilities could be in the form of mobility. Those can, they could be in the form in, in terms of improved graphic user interfaces, less transactions, more friendly screens, the ability to give the operator time to concentrate on the machines versus entering transactions. Also giving the supervisor additional tools to monitor their operation. Uh, the other point too is, is that you're going to wind up, as you go to Smart Factory, upskilling people based on the technology that you're putting in into your facility. The downside of that is, is that some people are resistant to change, and we have seen examples whereby, in this particular case, um, a company went over to S4 HANA and had MII and, and ME, and as a result, a portion of their workforce that had been supporting SAP decided to leave as opposed to taking the additional training um, to get versed in MII. So again, a little bit of a mixed bag, but mostly it's going to be very beneficial for the operators as well as you need to keep the technology, keep the employees skilled in the technology because the technology is not going to be static. It's going to evolve over time. So it can be very engaging for the employees, but there's also a challenge and a cultural shift with it as well too. Interesting. Thank you, Greg. Um, that's it for our questions. Thank you to our presenters, Ray and Greg, and thank you all for attending this Fujitsu-sponsored webinar. As I had mentioned, the recording will be shared with you tomorrow, and that concludes today's presentation. Thank you again, and you may now disconnect.